thank you for attending the 2022-23 athlete parent meeting. My name is Mike Megan, and I am the athletic director here at Soto Central School. I am excited to begin a full season of athletics. In tonight's parent athlete meeting, I will be going over some important guidelines and regulations that you will need to know for the 22 sports season. If you have any questions, you can email me at any time. Also, this PowerPoint will be on our athletic website, so you can easily access any of the information that you learned today. Let's have some introductions to our fall coaching staff. In cross country, we have Coach Palmer. In boys soccer, we have Coach Hauk and Coach Riggleman at the varsity level, Coach Malatafee at the JV level, and Coach Strong at the modified level. Girls soccer, Coach Denny, at the varsity level, Coach Hicks at the JV level, and Coach Surgeon at the modified level. For girls tennis, we have Coach Humbert. For girls volleyball, at the varsity level is Coach Sprague at the JV level, Coach Tyler, and at the modified level, Coach Rodden. At the boys modified level, we have Coach Barber, and for our merger with Lions, we have Coach Steve at the varsity level, Coach Montez at the modified level. Our school nurse is Miss Budinger. The Booster Club will be open this year for all sports seasons. However, we need a, a, a president for the Booster Club. If anyone is interested, please contact me. Our athletic page is up and running. It has some very important information. The web, the web page can be reached by going to SOTUS csd.org, then clicking on athletics. From there you will find lots of important links. Let's take a look. So here's our site. Uh, all you would do, here's a couple things that you can look at if you go and hover over a game. Uh, you'll see practice times, game times. If you want to know when a bus leaves, just hover over that ga particular game and the bus leave time shows up underneath. You can also look up rosters, scores and standings, and if you need to contact any coaches, you just click on coaches, click on their name, and you can get their contact information. Family ID, also online and our athletic webpage. This is for our sports registration. So all athletics for varsity and JV have started today. Uh, so you should be registered uh, on family ID. If you have any questions or have, are having trouble, please reach out to myself, Ms. Kirky, or Ms. Budinger for help. Now for the family ID, you do need to be approved if your student or son or daughter is not approved on family ID, they will be indicated in red and they will not be able to attend or participate in any practices or games until they are uh, approved. So please make sure all the information is accurate on family ID and take your time answering the questions. All this information will be followed with your athlete to away games for emergency uh, situations. Now let's discuss uh, some of the academic eligibility policies that we have in place. All this information would be found on Family ID once you register your child. But for review, on to a couple items that sometimes students forget. First, you must participate in PE or you cannot participate in any extracurricular activities for that day, which includes practice or games. This is a New York State requirement. The eligibility policy stands, if you are failing one new class at the end of the five weeks, you will be indicated in yellow or level one on the ineligibility list. And then you will receive information home on the yellow sheet of paper. If you're failing the same class or more than two classes at the end of five weeks, you will be indicated as level two and you will get a red sheet. Level one, your grades are always going to be monitored by your coach and your athletic department. You may continue to practice and participate in games, but you are encouraged to get those grades up so that you can continue playing. 
if you are failing the, that same class a second time or you're failing more than one class, you will be indicated in red and the penalty would be that you will not participate in any games or contests. You still, however, will be required to practice uh, so that you can learn and keep being part of the team. Once you are passing the classes, you must email Ms. Kirky or myself to let us know. This information will not be accepted by your coach or teacher. It is the student responsibility. So, some also other important information. Uh, all students must be at school by 8 a.m. in order to participate in games and practices. Uh, if you have a doctor's appointment, then you must have a note from the doctor stating that you were there. A parent note will not uh, be sufficient. Please also pay special attention to the technology and social media violations that are in and out of season. If you are posting derogatory comments towards players, other players, coaches, teachers, or fans, that will be monitored and game suspensions could be given out. Also, guilt by association. Students at a party where drugs or alcohol are present must make every effort to remove themselves safely and quickly. Students who do not are considered in violation of these extracurricular expectations and will be held accountable. Let's go over some of those penalties. So for if a, the first offense in or out of season, if a student is found guilty of violating the drug and alcohol or vaping rule in season or out of season, they will be suspended for 25% of the remainder, remaining season, which is a minimum of two games. In the event that the remaining season does not equal two games, the remainder of the penalty will be served at the next available season. A student who has been found guilty must continue to attend practices and meet team activity expectations. If the student fails to attend practice and meet team activity expectations, he or she will be subject to further consequences. The student will also be required to serve and complete 10 hours of community service prior to being allowed to re-enter extracurricular activities. Students must submit completed community service forms to the building administrator. The second offense, they will be suspended from participating in the remaining portion of the current season plus an additional 20% of contest events of the next extra extracurricular activity in which they participate. And then the third would be Again, while either in or out of season, they will meet with the athletic director and or principal to determine the loss of privilege of participating in duration of their high school career. Some important reminders. The transportation uh, permission slip is now online. You can find it at our athletic webpage, student transportation. Uh, if you click here, I'll show you where to go. It's just gonna pull you right up. All you have to do is fill this out. It's a live Google document. Coaches can look at it. They'll, notif they'll be notified. And this needs to be done 24 hours before the contest. Now, all students are required to ride the bus to games unless there's some type of an emergency. If they do need a ride, if they are gonna take a ride home with their parents, again, please get this filled out 24 hours prior to the away game. Injuries. Athletes, please tell your coach immediately if you get hurt. If you go to the doctor or urgent care, get a note. It should include a diagnosis, restrictions, and or your return to play protocols. Have the note fa faxed directly to me or Ms. Buttinger or bring it to her the very next day. Tenth period. Athletes will need to meet with a teacher or club during tenth period. They will be dismissed at 2.55 and then will be able to change for practice. On Mondays and Fridays, students will attend sports study hall and must wait in the cafeteria until practice begins. Sports study hall will end at 2.55. If a bus is scheduled to depart later than 3 o'clock, athletes will need to stay with their coaches at a designated area. See your coach for locations. And now for some spectator uh, procedures. Let's take a look at this video. Conductor, how about something new? You played this last year. Come on. 
Sean. Get your head out of your sacks. Shh. We're trying to hear. Well, I'm sick and tired of hearing your kid play the wrong notes. Where's my kid solo? At least you can see your kid. Why is my kid still playing in the back? The conductor only plays his favorite. Woo! My kid heard that solo! You say it like it? Yeah, Come on! All right. So a little humor. Uh, but I want to go over a couple spectator procedures that are in place this year. Uh, New York State has implemented a new spectator sportsmanship rule, which states that if a spectator is removed from a contest by an official or supervisor, they will be suspended for one game and will have to complete an online sportsmanship course before they can return to any Section 5 sporting event. If a spectator is asked to leave and refuses, the official will stop the game until they are removed. Let's remember is for the kids. So be loud, be proud, and be positive. So our SOTUS athletic philosophy uh, that should be uh, reviewed at your parent coaches meeting, um, coaches are going to communicate their, their rules, their philosophies, their expectations for the athletes, as well as locations and times of practices, team requirements, and then maybe procedures for injuries. Some appropriate concerns to discuss with your coach would be the treatment of your son or daughter physically, mentally, or emotionally, ways to help your son or daughter, or, or concerns about any of their uh, behaviors. Some inappropriate things to discuss with coaches would be playing time, team strategies, uh, play calling, and discussing any other athletes. Remember, there is a 24-hour rule policy with talking to coaches as well. So please do not approach or have to try to have any of these conversations 24 hours after the game. Anytime 24 hours after a game is okay, but right after a game, it's not the best time to discuss these things. Now, the chain of communication also is in effect here at SOTUS where if there is an issue, we, we encourage that the player or parent should first reach out to the coach and discuss the issue. If nothing is resolved, then the second level would be to reach out to me, the athletic director. If there are still some concerns after that, then we would go to the final, which would be meeting with the principal or superintendent. But hopefully, if we follow this chain of communication, easily, easily things can get resolved. Thank you for attending. Please, if you have any questions, feel free to email me or give me a call. Again, this PowerPoint with all the links will be on our athletic webpage. And I look forward to a great sports season. Thank you.